So guys, we saw this syntax in part nine of this video series. Now this declaration makes possible for some variable to hold any kind of function and by any kind I mean that it could contain a one parameter, two parameter and so on. Same way the return type could be string, number, boolean. So we have essentially no control over what function we are going to assign to this variable. All right. Now we can make this variable rather contain a specific function in future by using either a right function signature or b function type. Now let's start with function signature. So what is a function signature? The function signature is basically the blueprint of a function. By blueprint I mean that this function signature describes the number of parameters the function will take. It also specifies the type of each parameter. Now, whether a parameter is of type optional or default, you can also mention that in your signature, right? And also the return type of the function, okay? So the function signature basically gives you the control over what your function would look like eventually in future, okay? So let's define a function signature, a very simple function signature. So we say, and before that, let us comment this out, okay? So we say let sum, okay, colon, and what we have seen this far is after this colon, we provide in the type of the variable. Now this sum, right, is supposed to hold function, and now we are going to provide in what the function signature, and it's very simple. We start with the arguments, and where do we post our arguments in a function in these parentheses? Okay, so now in here you say num1 okay colon is of type number that's my first parameter for this function and the other one is let's say num2 okay is also of type number okay now we have to mention the re the return type of the function and for that we use this fat arrow right and then we just mention the data type okay that is number so this function in future will hold two weight parameters right and the return type of the function would be number and what would be the parameter data types you could see num1 would be of number type and num2 would also be of number type okay so we have established some control over what this function will look like right we are not controlling the logic but we are controlling the input and output so function has three things input processing and the output okay so we are controlling input and output right great so let's create a function following this signature okay so we say sum okay equal to in here now can you see the intelligence num1 is of type number num2 is of type number but you can give any name to your parameter all those parameters should match to is the data type okay now we say a colon number okay absolutely fine b colon number okay and then you say this fact arrow and inside this opening and closing braces you provide in the logic and you just say return a plus b all right now from this return statement okay we can infer the return type of this function and that is going to be number and if you want you can also mention it explicitly you can say number All right guys so now this function is matching to this signature if you make any change to this in here like you say c again of number of any type you immediately get this error okay what other thing you can do is let's change the data type of this parameter b if you set it to string again it is not matching or right with the signature so it is not going to work same way the return type you can play with the return type okay so you can either say it to string again not going to match okay and same way you can change it here and you add in some string okay that's a power of function signature all right now let me take a copy of it and let's now try to understand how to work with you know optional parameters and a default parameters right using function signature I'm just going to take a copy of it and comment this out. So we come down and let's say we first do optional one. Option parameter in function signature. 
all right we just paste it let's add in one more parameter in here we say num3 okay and question mark colon and number okay great so this is how we define this function all right great now let me hover over this so you see num3 question mark colon number then pipe symbol undefined okay just remember this because we are going to work with that now we add in here c colon number okay we have to make it optional right if you don't make it optional we immediately get this error okay so type of parameter c and num3 are incompatible why they're incompatible because in here we are saying that it is of type number right but in here we have seen that it is of type number and undefined so it is incompatible okay so let's make it compatible by adding this question mark right here okay and then i add c okay i will get error because we have seen that in part 9 that you know if this setting is turned on right it will ensure that you know it is going to check for nulls and undefined right and if we again hover over this object is possibly undefined so we you know fix that in part 9 itself so we say if c okay and then let me just cut it from here okay so inside if block we say return a b and c if c is not undefined else we say a and b okay like so so this works okay so this is how guys you are going to work with optional parameter in function signature okay now uh, what about the default so default parameter in function signature so again let me take a copy of it okay and you might be thinking that yeah just like we did optional right so i just get rid of this right because this is what we have learned with functions and i just say let me give it a default value but guys we immediately get an error what is the error a parameter initializer is only allowed in a function or constructor implementation so we can't do it like this okay so let me revert it to optional only and you know to understand how we are going how we can do this right so i have created this this function in advance when you know the c parameter is of type default right and if i just hover over this what do you see c question mark colon number all right so what is this this is a function signature guys okay so which means that you know if i have to mention my default parameter right in the function signature it has to follow this question mark style right so we are doing it like this so basically when you are assigning this function to the sum variable what do you have to do in here you just have to say c number okay and in here you just have to provide in the value like so and the error goes away right the condition is satisfied because num3 says that either it has to be number or undefined right and 10 is a number right so condition met no issues all right so next is your function type okay so guys we can achieve something similar with function types as well you know we learned type aliases in part 10 of this video series and in there we covered type aliases for you know long and complex data types let's now learn it on functions you know so we say type then you give the name of the type okay after a space so we say addition then you say equal to okay and then guys what you have to do is you just have to copy this stuff exactly like so come down paste it like this okay so you have created a type right now this particular way right is called as type level now let's create a variable of type addition okay and that basically becomes the value level okay so this is type level okay then we are creating the value level how do we do that we say let aggregate now okay is of type addition which you just created okay and we say equal to and in here now you know it's again very simple so what do we do we just again copy this whole thing from here all right i'm lazy all right guys so now return type logic stays like function signatures okay so you can say like in here string right you get this error because it is not matching with this type 
right? You you leave it number, but then you add something in here. I mean, when this return type is not matching with that, you again get the error, right, guys? So that's all about function signatures and function type. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.